Mike's talk today was on drug-induced osteonecrosis of the jaws. This is a complication of two main drugs, denosumab and um, bisphosphonate, of which you're basically talking about zoledronic acid and pomidronate. These we have found in the oral and maxillofacial surgery specialty and dental specialty to cause dead bone in the jaws called osteonecrosis of the jaws. And in a bottom line sense, these are medications that are good for the cancer patient up to a limited point. At some point, the dose gets to be too much for the jaws, and the jaws develop exposed dead bone, causing pain, causing secondary infections, which may limit the treatment and maybe the discontinuation of the drug. So my talk today was focused in on showing the oncology professors that this is a real entity and that we in the dental, oral, and maxillofacial surgery profession are on their side because we want to take care of these patients and not let this exposed bone in the jaw limit their treatment. So there's three ways we can manage this. If we see the patient before the oncologist starts one of these medications, we can get the dental community to take out the bad teeth, to clean up the infections in the jaws, to treat dental decay, and get the mouth in top condition so that during treatment, problems don't arise. Then during treatment, if the oncologist is uh, examining their patients, be on the lookout for patients who complain of jaw pain, dental tooth pain, uh, sinus pain, they have facial swellings, or they have difficulty swallowing. Those are some of the red flags to be alert for. So if the oncologist uh, sees any of these in their patients, send them to an oral and maxillofacial surgeon who can look at that with a trained eye and be able to treat that before it becomes a significant problem. And then for those individuals who already have the exposed dead bone in the jaws, I tell the patients that the dead bone is dead, it's not painful by itself. However, it becomes painful when the bacteria of the mouth settle in, become a colonization or infection. For those patients, the two best drugs are either penicillin, whether it's amoxicillin or penicillin VK, inexpensive, minimal side effects, will be a good treatment to reduce their pain, reduce any infection. Doxycycline, which is a type of tetracycline, also works very well. Again, minimal side effects, hardly uh, a big cost to it, it's a relatively inexpensive medication, and of course in the penicillin allergic patient you would rather use a doxycycline. For either of those two medications, if they do not work up to what you would expect, if you add metronidazole to it, 500 milligrams three times a day, it will add to it and usually resolve any pain or any secondary infection. Then the last thing is that for those individuals who have advanced disease, their jaw breaks, a pathologic fracture, radiographically there's what we call osteolysis or bone dis dissolution to the inferior border, or these antibiotics are just not working to your standards, we often have to do a surgery. And what I tried to show in my lecture recently is that no matter how aggressive the surgery looks, with modern titanium plates and reconstructive efforts, we can reconstruct these people at the time we remove the dead bone which will cure their pain, resolve their infection, get them back to a normal quality of life without creating a deformity. So I, I guess the bottom line that I tried to illustrate through my lecture today is that if the professions of oncology and oral and maxillofacial surgery and dentistry can work together, we can reduce the incidence of osteonecrosis of the jaw, we can reduce the severity in people who develop it, and we can resolve it in those people who do develop it.